So I mentioned that there are springs here. They're not really pumping real strong. I think that the, uh, the water table is kind of low. We had a, a very dry fall. So the influence of the spring isn't quite what it usually is in this area. But that being said, it's still an excellent winter hole because it has examples of, of calm water. And I'm in a spot that, you know, I can actually look down and see carp scooting around and I've actually looked down and seen seen a few bass. I got that one one smallmouth. But one way to tell where where the stillest water is is by looking where ice forms first, which is somewhat maddening. You know, you look back in there and you can see, you know, that ice forming in and amongst those uh those logs in there and for sure that is going to be some of the easiest um, water for the largemouth in particular to hold and, and not really fight current. I'm in a little bit of current and I don't know if you can tell that I'm moving but I'm very slowly moving through through the center of the uh, you know this this section of river but it's still very slow movement but I'm gonna keep throwing my jig up and around this uh, this brush on this side where that, that ice is formed and uh, that's gonna be our stillest water, easiest for them to uh, conserve energy. GoPro start recording. People don't believe me. I tell them. Three minutes. Give your jig three minutes in a spot. Don't move it for three, three minutes. Don't drag it. Don't hop it. I'm drifting away from it. I'm moving towards it to not drag it. Give them a chance. Just give them a chance to get good and curious about that thing that they watched hit the surface and go. And just sit there. Three minutes. That was uh, about three minutes. Might have been less. How long? What? Two and a half? Okay. That's your prerogative, Bass. But constantly dragging and moving it, and it's just it's just not what they are into this time of year. Unless the river's rising. It's not. It's low and clear and stable. All right, go home. So I am using the same jig I've been using the last several trips. That, uh, there you can see it, that finesse jig. But I'm jumping up in size in the trailer. I went from the 2.75 inch bat wings to the 3.5, but it looks the same. I've trimmed the claws. The reason I wanted the bigger 3.5 bat wings is because it has the wider body, which I think, at least my theory, is that it will 
it will get in less trouble um, in and around the wood. And I think the wood, if, if there is a weakness of this jig, it's that it, it in, in this setup with the trailer, is that it can roll and that hook just digs in just a little bit to the, uh, to the brush. It does really good around the rocks, stays out of trouble, doesn't snag badly if it does snag. I got a bunch of fish out there in the middle. And it occasionally snags in wood. When it does snag in wood, it doesn't snag, well, you usually get it back because that hook tends to, to bend out when you, you just pull on it. And uh, it'll, it'll straighten out, you get the jig back, bend it back in shape, and it handles that very well. But a thicker chunk body on that, that trailer, um, I'm just trying it out, seeing if it works. I want to show you something. I mentioned earlier that I looked down and I saw a carp. And I've seen them actually come up and mouth the surface. But, but the bass always hang out around the carp. And that, that one large mouth I got was, was around something that I can see on the surface. And it's, it's bubbles. Just a big area of just bubbles coming up. I don't see it now. I'm hoping, actually, I see a few there. What it is is the carper um, 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 munching on the bottom. They're, they're, whatever they eat, algae and snails and crustaceans and such. There's some right over there, too. Um, when they do it, bubbles come up and it, it shows off where they are. In summer, you see these big plumes of of muck. If you have polarized glasses, you can look and see it. But hopefully, yeah, I think I can show you. Let's zoom in on this. I wanted you to see the bubbles. They're bass in with the carp. Bass always hang out near the carp because they provide an opportunity to feed because they muck up things. They kick up pilgrimites and crayfish and stuff. Let's see if I can show you what I see. Yeah, I can see them right in there. See those bubbles coming up? I don't know if this is conveying on film. They're tiny bubbles, but they're in there. They're right in that area. So I know where to, where to place the jig. I'm gonna put the camera down, put a jig right in that that bubbled area. I'm gonna hang back and cast into it. But there are carp and there are bass right there under the bubbles. Come on, bass, eat it. You're right there looking at it. I know you're looking at it. Do you wanna taste it? Is that round rubber moving? Oh, look at all these bubbles. Oh, I'm too far above. Right, let's try this. You got grass on there. I don't want that grass. Right. So much of fishing is the mental game of it. You know, if you have confidence in a spot, you got a leg up because you believe it. You believe that there are fish there and it helps you focus and when you tell yourself he's there he's looking at it he's gonna eat it he is gonna eat it he's about to eat it it's gonna happen and just let it sit there a little bit longer he's swimming over use visualization swimming over to check it out and he's eating it so positive mental attitude and visualization, believing it's going to happen, gives you focus, which gets you 
paying attention. And when you're paying attention and you get that subtle little bite. They don't, they don't always jam it really hard in winter. But if you believe that it's about to happen, if you have that focus, that jig came right out. Because you believed, yeah, there are fish there and the fish are gonna eat. Visualization, positive mental attitude, it's, it's everything. Fishy. I'm gonna visualize up another fish. I put it in there. Carp are swimming around. One of them just kind of knocked his tail into it. There's three bass behind it. Tell yourself a story. What's happening down there? One of them came over and sniffed it. Got his chin right up next to it and said, I don't know. The other two are watching him to see what he does. One of them comes over and says, I don't know about the other two, but I could go for a crayfish right about now. Right about now. Now. How about now? Focus. It's, it's a mental game. If, if you can work on it, have faith, you know, develop that, that part of your brain that always is optimistic and says, yes, there's a fish there. He is going to eat. There's so much about winter fishing that you could be pessimistic about. Water's cold. Their metabolism is slow. They don't have to eat. Don't do that. Don't, 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 don't make excuses before you've even tried. You're out here. Give yourself the advantage of positive mental attitude, visualization. It's going to happen. Even if it happened, hasn't happened all day, I will tell you some of my best fish in winter have been one fish day, one big fish days. And the, the amount of help, the amount of confidence I'm, I'm away from where I was. I drifted out of the area. The amount of confidence knowing that that it's it can just be one one fish that does it all. I mean it could be your personal best. It could be the biggest thing you've ever caught. And it's it's common in winter that that's what you get is the biggest one you've caught in your life. I would tell you that, that that's a good fish. That what winter fishing does for you, GoPro, start recording, is it makes you mentally tough. That's about a four pounder. It's a good fish. It, it gives you that mental toughness that you need to maintain the focus. To be able to say, you know, it's, it's gonna happen. All right, I overestimated, but he's a good fish. You know, every, every time I see somebody that, you know, decides, yes, I'm gonna start fishing in winter, I watch their next season go so much better than their previous ones because they develop mental toughness. They develop these skills. I'm going to take him away from the rest of those fish. They're right there. You can still see the carp. So the you, you develop mental toughness when you winter fish. You develop the ability to <laughs> to call upon um, positive mental attitude and visualization. You, you develop this ability to, um, breathing all right down there, man. You develop the ability to, to focus, to not have negativity creep into your mind. And let's see, hot fishy. Get him back in. 
good fish. Bet you there's bigger ones in there. Circle around, throw the jig in again. We're gonna put the underwater camera down there. See what's going on in that carp pod. Hopefully I don't spook them off. If I move through really slow, maybe we get to see some stuff. I can see a few right out in front of me. There's a lot of, it's like a sandy bottom, but there's a lot of shells right in the spot. Uh, and they look like they've been munched. There's some largies. Oh, look at the big bluegill. Oh yeah, look at all that. Whole bunch of largemouth and bluegill. There's some kind of feeding station right there. They eat the shells. I think the carp eat the shells. And hopefully I got all that. And the bass are just hanging out in there looking, looking to pick off whatever they can. It's a lot of fish in one spot. I think it's a carp feeding station. That is fascinating. The bottom there looked very clean, like it had been picked over, munched on quite a bit. Cool spot. I love learning new stuff. Oh, Mr. Smallmouth. I don't think I saw smallmouth in that pack of... in that carp school. He was in a different spot. So, the willingness to explore in winter gives you so much. It really allows you to see see the river in a different season that gives you insight that you don't have in the other seasons. Um, you know, I know that there'll be some people that, that say, you know, yeah, of course, if I was in the spots that you go, Jeff, I'd have all the confidence in the world and you know, you, you have these great spots. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, I can't say no. But I will say that I have great processes. And a, a work ethic. Of, of hey, go, go find water. Go find fish where you've never found them before in winter. Hard to do. Hard to have that confidence. Hard to have the, the endurance, the mental toughness to say, yeah, I'm going to go somewhere I've never been before, and uh, I'm going to make them eat in winter. Well, the more exploration that you do, the more you find places like where I'm at. And, and I, got a, I got a long list of them because I've been exploring, you know, rivers in particular for decades decades and decades i love it all seasons i love it well being out here and i really love the the finding a new <laughs> new really good winter hole and it in order to do it you gotta you gotta be okay with coming out here and not catching anything You'll be all right with that, because it happens a lot. I mean, I will do, I'm good at it, but if I'm exploring, I will go, oh man, that might be a cart. I will, I will see probably, yeah, it's just snagged the cart. This is gonna be a mess. I will go to, I will do eight or nine trips sometimes before I find one that's really, truly awesome like this one. I'm sorry, Carpy. I got to get that off of you. 
It's right on his tail. He's gonna dive into that wood too, isn't he? I've upset him. caught this 13 inch crappie we're gonna get him back in there same spot that everything else is is actively feeding in Interesting. Alright, we got another species on the list today. I have caught a snag to carp. That's not what this is. I've caught largemouth, caught smallmouth. Big old crappy. Little fall fish. These are excellent musky bait. If you can ever get these, they're also good catfish bait. They're fun though. See you guys. So when it comes to breaking down a winter hole that you know has has some fish, uh, it's actually to your advantage to be out here sometimes when the water is close to freezing. Um, not because the colder it gets, the more they bite. I mean, it, it depends on the day. Uh, generally, it doesn't work like that. Warming trends where the, the water temperature was 33 and it's gone up to 37, yeah, that's a great day for them to bite. But what being out here when it's when it's as cold as it is, and, and I don't know, I didn't bring the you know the the graph today or the, the depth finder to, to know what the water temperature is, but I know that it's it's close to freezing because we have ice on the water on the shoreline. That tells you so much. The places that the ice forms first and maybe holds on the longest are the stillest in a in a particular pool. So let's take a look at this spot right here. Um, you got a little bit of a point that sticks out there and it blocks current, it pushes away. And the, the way that I know it is that there's this, this you know, shelf of, of ice. That's, you know, there's water underneath that. And uh, we come back a little bit, there's some nice wood. So assuming there's good depth there, um, that's a, that's a good spot because it's it's current protected. Um, this side is also current protected, but the difference there is that it's on the side of the river that that the sun is always hitting. It it's facing the south. This one that's facing the north, uh, the ice hangs out a little bit longer. And for sure, that's you know that's gonna form the ice shelf first. Uh, but it gives you an indication that, hey, there's really still water right there. So just one little tip to, to break down, you know, where is the stillest water? 
and uh, I'm gonna zoom over there and uh, just take a look. I, I'm probably not gonna fish it right away. Yeah, it's, it's deep water. There goes the carp. And yeah, I, I definitely want to come back and fish this. There's bedrock heading this way. And uh, look at that wood jumbling up. And uh, for sure, this shelf of ice tells me very still water there. And that's what they want. They, they want a little section where, you know, and, and here it is shallow again. So this shallow point, this shallow water here is, you know, with that ledge rock is diverting it away. And that is, is good deep, deep water that is, um, that is still, there's a lot of that right here. I think I saw a bigger one on the way up, but I cruised right over that spot. There's a submerged log up in there that's pretty big. And I just saw one cruise out of there. It's nice to get a get a preview. You work a bank going up, you look, if you got the polarized glasses, you can Sometimes see them if you if you spook them out of a spot. I've had two fish that I've spooked off a of big wood today, and that was the spot. I don't think it's the same fish. It's a nice fish. wasn't a you know wasn't a real big one that I saw on the way up, but that's a good fish. Thank you, fish. Moving around in there too. All right, so I just pulled two of them off of that bank right there. It's exactly opposite the uh, the really still shelf of uh, of ice that we talked about earlier that has that still water, and you know it's it's in the same part of the pool that has deeper still water. The only difference is that side is getting this, the sunlight, this, you know, late afternoon winter sunlight is beating on that bank and we have more active fish there. The, the sun can absolutely, you know, make or break a, uh, an afternoon, you know, winter bite on one particular bank. So I'm gonna keep working this bank all the way down. See if I can pick up a few more. spot right behind me. I like working that bank, but every time I cast out here, there's a fish. I had the thought, you know, yeah, maybe it's a feeding station for, <clears throat> for the carp eating the shells, but as clean of a bottom as it is, maybe that's the spring. Maybe there's a spring pumping out right there and they like hanging out in that warmer Kind of sand, sandy, shelly bottom. I don't know. It's a fish magnet, whatever it is. Yeah. That spot, that mid river, clean bottom. It's probably. 
probably a spring. I've worked at one spot from every angle possible. And it keeps reloading. All right, later in the day, less sunlight. I'm seeing that better. There's bubbles coming up in that one spot in, I think I've changed my mind on what it is. Cause I've gone there and seen the bubbles and not seen fish there. I think it's a spring bubbling up right in the middle. Cause it's a clean bottom. There's absolutely no sediment or muck there it's just like sand and some shells i think that's a spring cool spot all right i am quickly running out of daylight i'm gonna zoom back to uh to the truck i got a little bit of work to get up that hill uh but once we get in the vehicle we're gonna have a little discussion about what it takes to find winter holes like this uh that, that clearly have lots and lots of fish in them. Um, I, I fished this a year ago with my buddy Jed and we did even better. I think this particular um, pool fishes better when it's higher, but we'll discuss what it takes to find places like this. All right, I'm, uh, I'm whooped. It took a while to get all my gear, I actually took three trips um, from the water back up to the truck. Um, I'm also whooped because I, you know, I had to dig my truck out of the, the snow that I threw it in, put it into the low gear, and, uh, you know, use my paddle to, to scoop the, the snow out of the way to get out of there. It was um, a difficult access for sure. Worth it, though. Totally worth it because I knew what that particular hole held and I'd mentioned I wanted to come back and talk about how you find places like that well winter fishing gives you a lot if you work for it um, it gives you positive mental attitude it gives you focus it gives you a mental toughness all of those are useful things to have year-round and when you get good at them in winter, you're a better fisherman year round, especially the mental toughness part, the, the just, just grit that you're going to, you're going to catch fish. Um, and yeah, the, the positive mental attitude, the visualization, the, I just put my jig in there and there's at least three big fish checking it out right now. And, and you believe it, whether you're lying to yourself or not, you may have to, to begin, but I want to come back to how do you find places like that? Um, you, you need to have an ethic of exploration. If you've found a spot and that is your spot that you fish in winter, give yourself some growth. Uh, leave that spot alone. I mean, maybe hit it once or twice. That spot, I hit it last winter. Um, this is probably going to be the only time I hit it this winter. Why? Well, if you keep hammering on the same spot, I don't know. It, 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 it can affect where they position and whatever. You're not always going to be able to go to that river or that river. What I've done over uh, three decades is, is develop... A long list of winter spots uh, for sure two decades two and a half decades pretty intensely um, and you have to explore to to develop those you have to be willing to go out and and do float trips cover a lot of distance in and, and be okay with hey I skunked today hey I skunked 
twice in a row. Hey, I did three or four trips where I caught nothing. Um, you know, if you're doing that, yeah, maybe go back to your, your one spot that you found um, just to get get right with winter fishing again. But, you know, it, it the ethic of exploration will give you so much if you're if you're committed to it you know i think of it with this analogy you know if you see someone like arnold schwarzenegger or uh dwayne the rock johnson you know you don't look at that guy and say if i only knew where his gym was i'd be just as big as he is no everyone understands that he works for it he you know it, 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 just because you know where the gym is doesn't mean that you're gonna be big and, and strong uh, everyone understands that he had to work for it and going as much as you can in winter um, when things are safe of course um, it, it makes you stronger it it develops your <laughs> your mental toughness muscles if you will your focus your optimism uh, your visualization all of these things that are that are here. I talked about, you know, hey, I had to be strong to to pull all my gear out of there. That's not the kind of strength I'm talking about. It's the one that's between these two things on the side of your head. That mental strength is everything. And if you get good at it in winter by exploring, finding new productive winter spots, even if you go to a spot and you're like, it looks good. Um, I saw a fish, didn't catch him. You've got something. You've learned something. You know, you've learned where that fish chose to be. So get out there, explore, um, be tougher than, you know, than, than not going again the next weekend if you're if you get skunked one weekend. Get out there, enjoy it, because you'll see beautiful things and you will learn stuff and you'll become a better angler by winter fishing. That's it. See you.